what is that cooking in the oven? I'll tell you what it is. It's a steaming, hot, wet pile of dynamic banter. Stir it around. And take note of the sounds, because they're all funny. Stir it for 36 hours. Hard. And don't stop. Don't stop you can't stirring. can't stop stirring. Look at me while you're stirring it. This show is kind of demands your brain do some stirring while you listen to this. Yes. <laughs> Listening what? to our show is like stirring a a uh, <laughs> stirring <laughs> ingredients for thirty six hours. Stirring a cauldron of, of <laughs> trash. <laughs> stirring a trash cauldron. You ever stirred a garbage? Imagine, yeah, imagine a cauldron full of garbage and gray water. <laughs> Hey guys, welcome to the show. Welcome to Cauldron of Gray Water and Trash. Welcome to Cauldron (laughs) of Trash. (laughs) Trash Cauldron. That sounds like a metal band. (laughs) (laughs) That's a cool metal band, Trash Cauldron. Are you guys excited for Trash Cauldron? Trash Cauldron sounds like a ride at Disneyland that they didn't do. (laughs) It's like the teacups, but it's more adult themed. (laughs) Try, you're in a trash, a spinning trash cauldron. Dude, I want to do a sketch. Did you ever see that Key and Peel sketch where it's like, <laughs> it's so good. It's like a, a boardroom. If you haven't seen it, we're going to watch it after the show. Uh, maybe we'll make some Patreon content or something. Speaking of. Just tell me what it was. But it was <laughs> a... Uh, <laughs> finish the first part <laughs> guys welcome to the show and i'll tell you we're we're a real garbage pile here trash cauldron was the first guy to step foot on the moon <laughs> there's a keen peel sketch where it's a board meeting and it's like they're trying to figure out gremlins 2 <laughs> okay have you seen this no have you seen gremlins 2 probably in bits and pieces remember the vegetable gremlin and like the lightning gremlin maybe And like, okay, well, Gremlins 2 went like bonkers. It's like one of my favorite movies ever Mm because it's like a cartoon horror movie with uh, Gremlin Gremlin puppets. Yeah. There's Gremlin goblins. We'll set there. There's goblins. Uh huh. Dude, I I'm there's so many offshoots happening here, but. I can't forget because my high brain will absolutely make it disappear. But we were also, uh, I forgot who I was with, but we were joking about gremlins. <laughs> it's connected, don't worry. And we were thinking how funny would it be to have like a series of 911 calls from people in the movie reporting gremlins yeah report yeah. did we was it us no but okay. that's funny but it's like an old lady going hello my neighbor has raccoons <laughs> yeah. and they're like what i see them in the window there's nine raccoons <laughs> the raccoons ordered pizza <laughs> They're and they're partying hard. They're playing Atari. <laughs> it looks pretty chill. <laughs> the raccoons are dancing in the mall. One of the raccoons has 3D glasses on and is reading a comic book. One of them has big old tits. <laughs> so that's Gremlins 2. Okay. Gremlins 2 is one with big tits. So the board reading meeting sketch is like, they're like, what do we do with Gremlins 2? And they're like, well, let's bring in the guy that knows how to make sequels Mm -hmm. and it's like one of i forgot who it is it might be keegan michael key but he comes in the room and he oh no no it's 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 the other guy it's jordan peele Peele. and he comes in and he's got like this funny 80s outfit on and he's like you guys trying to make gremlins too and they're like yeah what do we do and he's like vegetable gremlin and they're like what it's just all this he's just suggesting they do all this crazy shit Uh uh-huh and uh, I would love that to be, um, uh, like the like. Oh, fuck, I forgot how we even got there. What were you saying? That you're the me- only person that's spoken so far during this podcast. <laughs> <laughs> I said hello. Let's, let's bring it back. <laughs> Press stop and then go to the beginning and figure out what this podcast is about. We were talking about trash cauldron, yes. which is real good, stirring gray water in a bucket. Yeah, and then you said we're gonna watch this if you've never seen it, and then you described this video. sketch. Man, because I wanted to do sort of like the creation of something like the Gremlin sketch. Okay, but it was something we were doing. And I trash thought, cauldron is what? No, it wasn't that. Anyway, <clears throat> welcome to the show. 
Um, Mike had a really cool surrounded show that just happened. Mm -hmm. And for those of you that went, that's cool. Thank you very much for coming. Did you, do you have any insight into that? Was that a good show? Yeah. One of the better ones? It was very fun. I thought because it was a holiday weekend that we were going to struggle to get people in there. And both of the shows were packed and it was so much fun. Second show really has a energy about it. I was just going to say the second show felt like it had a way higher energy in the beginning. Yeah. Uh huh. But I, we had to take off. I was tired as fuck. Yeah. My eyes. What? But that first show was so good, man. And, uh, I love it a lot. Mm -hmm. Um, at one point that bartender guy Brian Moses he's, he's great I love him uh, I was ordering food and he comes over to me he's like yeah man what do you want and I was like uh I was like saying to Shannon Shannon was with me I was like what do you want Shannon she's like let's get those loaded fries and I was like okay loaded fries and then he doesn't say a word okay. he just stares at me with the same face and he goes is that it or <laughs> <laughs> I was like oh I no, I was waiting for you to be like, okay, what else? Yeah. And he's like, smoke less weed. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, he was like, come on, man. And I was like, what, are you busy? There's three Dude, people in here. <laughs> that's, that's so fucking funny, man. That's so funny because he's like, he's a bartender. Yeah. He's not like wait stuff. No. So he's memorizing every word you're saying. Oh, yeah. And every second you're letting go by, is a second, something is something else could getting be lost. Yeah. <laughs> but I was like, what, are you busy? Like, literally no one was at the bar yet. Yeah. And I'm like, wait, you go, you don't got a second to, like, have a rapport no, with me? No, they're switching in between shows. It's, like, arguably the this busiest time. This is the time. beginning. This is before anything started. Yeah, well, prepping the bar for stuff. Anyway, so it was really funny, and I was like, man, this guy either doesn't like me or this is just how he is. <laughs> And then later on, Heather came and sat next to me and he comes over and he's like, I love you, mademoiselle. Yeah, love Like Heather. he's like obsessed with her or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You could tell. He was like bringing her water and all sorts of stuff. Yeah. And I was like, all right, all right. And then I was, he saw Heather and I talking a lot. And he's thinking, who the fuck is this guy? It's like, oh, you he's... can find your words where you're talking. Yeah, <laughs> like this high motherfucker who's wasting my time. And and then here's my precious angel, Heather, who I bring water to and asking if she's okay every three She's minutes. under a heat lamp. Yeah, he's yeah. just making sure she's the most comfortable person in the whole place. <laughs> he tried. And at one point he comes over to her and he goes, hey, is this that one of those guys you work with? Is this one of your coworkers? <laughs> and she's like, no, he's like been in the show. He like comes here. He uh -huh. was the guy in the big suit. Uh -huh. And and he was like, oh. <laughs> and then he like went off to do his thing or whatever. Yeah. But I'd hoped that that gave me like a small bit of cred because I think he just thought I was just some like comedy show patron that was high off his balls that uh, was just like did I get drink yeah. and like he was like not having it <laughs> but then he found out that I'm like friends with Heather friends yeah. with you uh -huh. so maybe it like I don't know maybe it turned it off a little bit or he something. sees so many people a night yeah it yeah. really I'm sure it didn't stick in his craw at not all not only does he see so many people he probably sees so many people that look exactly like me for too. sure and he's and like, like the which... most obnoxious right and people who are wasted and wasting yes. his time yes yada yeah. yada yada i don't hold it against him but it was so funny so how good, done yeah. with me he was yeah the second i was ordering something yeah that's kind of like done. the comedy club mentality yeah. is everyone is busy and running around somewhere yeah and and uh, Everyone's busy no matter and what you. is happening, you're wasting the person's time. I've had um, like Julie at the front bar will always check on me and see what I want to drink. But even when she's like catching up with me, it needs to be like <laughs> it needs to be fast. Yeah. So well, she knows that. So you're me and yeah. I'm Julie. OK. Hey, Mike, you need anything? Oh, yeah. Can I get a Coke? Coke. Just Coca-Cola? Yeah, thanks. That's it's good it. to see good, you. Good, good. good yeah. You. you look good. Yeah, so, and we're all having fun tonight. Yeah. Okay, well, there you go. <laughs> go on. <laughs> go on. Yeah, we're all having fun tonight. Yeah, and that's like a really nice, like, friendship. That's us catching up. I love that. There's Those relationships are good, man. Yeah. I you like on the show them. tonight, or? Whoa. Okay. I... <laughs> you doing shows? Dude, I just opened up the History Roads, and the first one I see is from Ellie. 
Ellie. Did you know Ellie was sending no. in history rope? You know Ellie. You've been around her and inside and stuff. <laughs> cool. She is going to hate that. Thank you for your history. <laughs> um, Sorry, but So, yeah, but I loved it, man. It was such a good show. And, uh, man, it's just... <laughs> it's just... Mm. It's a fun time, man. I'm excited to to do it at uh, JFL in Montreal at the end of this month. Yeah, yeah, that is the 27th. A bunch of you already bought tickets. The website says that it's at 7:30 in the morning, and that can't be right. But we will figure out <laughs> that PM AM situation is crazy in Canada. But um, yeah, please come to that show, dude. If we could sell it out before we even announce the lineup, that would be very good for your boy. Do you know the lineup? No. That's awesome. Yeah. Is that fun? Yeah. Good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you know people who are so you just have to find out who's going? Yeah, and then like pick out of there. those people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. I'm sure a lot of your pals are going. A lot of them. I, I'm starting to get texts from people who have been added, and they're like, "We got to hang out." Apparently, it's like grown up VidCon. It's like yeah. we, everything we wanted. Uh, VidCon to be as we got older. Yeah, but for but, comedians. But for like adult comedians. And there's all like, you know, Jesus Trejo told me about this fucking steakhouse I got to go to. And I'm very excited oh, about tight. that. And they were just like, it's just the most fun. Like, streets are cobblestone. It's the most fun to hang out. Like, all of your funniest friends are around. Oh, and dude. it's not, I'm looking forward and to it. And it's like nonstop laughs. And also like the, oh, I don't want to see that guy stuff. <laughs> yeah, I think not too much of that because there's not. I honestly don't know. Yeah. I can't speak because I've never I've never been there before. But um, I think less of that than there would be at like a YouTube convention. Have you asked Patton Oswald to be on the show yet? You just no, I don't really him. have a relationship. With you should him. text him. Okay. Do you have his number? Yeah. Okay. What is it? Kevin has it. Say it. <laughs> Kevin. Kevin, say it. Kevin's dad knows him really well. <laughs> uh, dude. <Hi. laughs> <laughs> I'm excited happened? for you, man. Man, we don't need to talk about it. Are you guys on a plane together once or something? Um, I'm really excited, but I wanted to share with you something. Um, and then you know we'll get we'll get back to this if you want to. But um, we uh, I tweeted something at Neil deGrasse Tyson. Did he tweet back? No. <laughs> but this is my this is my attempt at pushing it. <laughs> This is my attempt at pushing it so that we can see, like, maybe we can give it a DB audience push so that we can get Neil deGrasse Tyson you to want answer You a signal amplification. Let's amplify this signal if we can, because I'd really love an answer to this. Um, there was an answer to this deep down in the replies that I thought was kind of interesting. By the way, this is what Twitter is for. Absolutely. I think that we've proven time and time again over the past 10 years that Twitter is for not, not for any type of real... Mm -mm. It doesn't really make a difference in the government or whatever. So you no. might as well get Neil deGrasse Tyson to <laughs> and see the this and see shit. <laughs> That's the thing, dude. If your dream is to get, well, I was going to say there's some people that will probably never see it. But if your dream is to get like a B-list celebrity to see a tweet you made, you could probably make that happen. And then before you send it, make sure you really need them to see that. Yes. Like, because they will see it and they will take it personally. Right. Like, don't waste your one shot because that's certainly going to be one shot. Dude, then once if you waste your shot and you say something obnoxious or something that years later you look back and you're like, man, that's kind of snarkier than it needed to be. Yeah. <laughs> that person will either have no recollection or tag you as that right regardless of how you right really and you hear that forever yeah you could get blocked and you did that yeah there's a lot of risk <laughs> know how much of twitter is your own fault not, a, <laughs> not only is there so many risks like that there's yeah. also the risk that like you said the thing you typed out comes off as snarky it's really but you're hard. just like trying to be funny sometimes yeah but it's hard dude yeah. like i've seen tweets from people that come off as like who the fuck do you think you're talking to type shit? Yeah. Why and they're like, no, like... no, I was just kidding. And it's like, uh, you can't joke with me like that. Don't have, that's like an age specific or an experience specific sense of humor. Yes. And then I think a lot of people move past it, but certain people, that's like a defense mechanism. Right. Like I have to talk to you. Like I'm kind of 
there's this assumed familiarity that you don't yes. want to have. Yes. Like if you're like poking fun at the other person, but you have no real rapport with them, yeah. it's not going to go over. You can't there. do it. Yeah. It, it, it's, and it always backfires. It's not going to be received well. Either you're, <laughs> either you're not going <laughs> to... You're not contributing to anything when you do that. Yeah. Did See? you say something nice or no? I thought I made a video. It was, it was oh, like... Oh, that was, a, it was the most creative video. type it of a It was the, like, first time show thing. Yeah. Dude, that video is so good. Dude, I still revisit it sometimes. It's there's so good. many people in, like, DMs who, like, will come at you with, like, a... Like, making fun of you yeah. for something that you've done on a video. Yeah. And then, like, try to reverse course after yeah. that. And I just want to be like, you're just like... Yeah. You're like, just... I've got messages that were like, hey, fat ass, my brother's birthday is coming up. Yeah. Can you send him a shout out? <laughs> I love you. Coffee you, owe me, you owe me a happy birthday because I listen to your dirt trash yeah, every week. Your piss at your piss, piss cauldron. Show. Your piss show. Your show about piss. Yeah. <laughs> so I decided to use my one shot with Neil deGrasse Tyson to ask him this. Like, hey, I've been listening to all the piss you say about space. Yeah, I, I want to hear more. How how much, what happens to my piss in space? Mm. Like, and I'm not talking about inside of the shuttle. I'm talking we about all know. in space. space. Yeah. What happens to my piss? Does frozen freeze frozen right piss balls. Yeah. Dude, it probably, this is me knowing nothing. Let's hear it. If you took your dick out to piss in space, your shit would probably freeze in your bladder. <laughs> yeah, you're right. It would like stab it up into your stuff like well i don't would... know how the trajectory goes to stab up into you but i'm saying having liquid in you would probably free yeah. so you thought like a kidney stone was bad imagine if all the piss a in your shard. bladder was just like one of those fancy ice cube balls that nick hamilton drops oh, into no. expensive drinks <laughs> yeah yeah imagine that damn I don't want that. So you'd have to, you'd be in extreme pain and you'd have to like wander back onto the spaceship to get yeah. warm and like, <laughs> be like, at least you'd be like <laughs> floating. So there'd be comfort in the fact that you weren't making any contact with anything to make it hurt more. You would only know pain. Yeah. <laughs> That's your only memory at that Sounds kind of tight. <laughs> anyway, yeah, what happens? Though? So this is what I tweeted to Neil deGrasse Tyson. I said, good afternoon, Neil, at Neil Tyson. My question is, <laughs> just without even... He didn't say there's a Q&A or anything. <laughs> My question is, would it be possible with today's technology to fuck the sun? <laughs> Day one of tweeting Neil deGrasse Tyson yeah. until he answers back. And um, so curious, though. Everyone wants to know. Who's everyone? A lot of people. Scientific community. A lot of people are saying legit question. <laughs> Someone asked Darren. Darren Von Gerdner asked if I'm doing all right. <laughs> Jesse says, I, oh, great question. I'd also of like to course, know this. Of course, dude. Jesse pulled up a chair and like made popcorn. He's yeah. like, finally. He's like, yeah. <laughs> he Somebody clapped, had the balls to say. He clapped at his Twitter. <laughs> He's never done that. Uh, someone else said, yep, signing on. Very interested in Neil's take on this. <laughs> what are you expecting? What's the best case scenario? I love a really legitimately scientific answer. Which is that you couldn't even get close yeah, enough. Yeah, like you you wouldn't be able to get close enough. How far away from the earth do you need to get before none of it is relevant? What's the closest I can get to the sun? 75 feet up in the air. Without a space suit on. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, um, so here's here's an answer my dick out from someone that at least sounds like they know what they're talking do about. i have to put suntan lotion on my dick if i'm gonna fuck this <laughs> and can it be sbf 20 because i don't have anything else i don't have anything <laughs> i'm not planning on going to the store I'm before not, i go to space i don't have time you understand i got i got a, good, a strict schedule i'm just a guy trying to fuck the sun look i'm a simple man <laughs> A simple man who's horny for the sun. I pay my taxes. <laughs> <laughs> I just want to fuck 
fuck the sun. Hey, I pay my tax. I go to work every day like the rest of I us. I put pants on one pant leg at a time, just like all of you guys. I'm trying to put my dick in the sun. I just want to put my dick in the sun. Uh, someone on Twitter, Matt, someone named Matt Linder, says, only by proxy would I be able to fuck the sun. That means you have to pay somebody else to fuck? You have to get cucked <laughs> by the sun? It says, if one were to ejaculate into a particle accelerator and accelerate said semen at maximum speed... Um. You need to fill it. With your cum, Kevin. I'm gonna come. That's what it sounds like. What about, about the, what about a Jack White? I'm gonna come! <laughs> like with that like weird filter all over it? I'm gonna come! I'm gonna come! <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> um. I'm coming. I'm coming. <laughs> If one were to ejaculate into a particle accelerator and accelerate said semen at max speed, I'm coming. One, <laughs> one, I'm coming deep into the night. <laughs> one could theoretically contrive a manner in which said expectorant is directed into the path of the sun at, given the absurdity, maybe half light speed. Wait, you then, said a beautiful word in the middle of that. Oh yeah, expectorant. expectorant. I'm a expectorant. That's how Harry Potter killed. <laughs> That's how he jerks off. Van Morrison. Expectorant. <laughs> <laughs> Expelliosis expectorant. Did he kill Van Gogh, Mr. Van Gogh? <laughs> he comes in his ear. Um, I'm kind, I'm kind, I'm kind. He said, Okay, let's try this again. Let's try to really, let's try to, because this is a lot of, this is a lot of big words. Let's see if we can really visualize. And them. these are all real big words. This guy isn't just like doing a thesaurus. I really hope so. Let's close our eyes and really listen to this. Someone else read it so I can close my eyes. Kevin, you close your eyes too. We'll find someone else. I'll read it. No, you close your eyes. <laughs> Everyone's eyes should be closed. Put it in front of me and I'll touch Everyone it. Everyone close your fucking eyes. Dude, make the computer voice read it. Oh, that's a great idea. And so we can close our eyes. I love that. Steve is now highlighting each and every word in the paragraph so that the computer voice may read it. I introduce now the computer voice. Only by proxy. If one were to ejaculate into a particle accelerator <clears throat> and accelerate said semen at max speed, one could theoretically contrive a manner in which said expectorant is directed into the path of the sun at, given the absurdity, maybe half, light speed. Okay, okay. And then there's one more. So far, I ha I don't know what any of those things mean. What we're mean. saying is, is if we were to shoot semen. Can you direct a particle into accelerator into the sun? Is that what he's saying? Well, he's saying... A particle accelerator God, can, I wish Neil was here. can kind of ma uh, um, make like a, a sun, like a little sun or something, right? But not the sun. It no, could, it's, it could, like, it's like it's like a type of, it's like a, the beginnings of a sun yeah. or something. So, so far you're already, this is what he's saying by proxy. It's a yeah, fake sun. He's saying you could come onto a fake, or you could shoot come onto a particle accelerator and it might... He said if you if it's directed into the path of the sun at half light speed, then given a delay of about 20 to 30 minutes, this matter could be on or relatively close to the sun. I'd rather jerk off onto a lamp. But see, I think this person doesn't understand that what I'm trying to say is, is I don't want to come on the sun. Yeah. I'd like to come into the sun. <laughs> It's as satisfying to me as uh, coming, you know, as uh, having sex with a woman and coming. Thank you. Thank you, Andre. <laughs> I really like this to get to Neil. <laughs> <laughs> Let's make it happen. Dude, I'll fucking, I'll help right now. I'll I, do my part. I used to ask Dr. Phil weird stuff. I remember that. Did he ever block you? 
Oh, that's a good question. Let's find out. Maybe ask Dr. Phil the same question. And Does I'll he handle Dr. stuff Phil. like this? Maybe I'll say, don't worry, I'll ask Dr. Phil too. How many days do I have to go back? This is buried. Dr. Deep. Phil didn't uh, block me. Good news. Okay, but so. But Jose Canseco did. I wonder why that is. He was upset with what I said, I guess. How many days ago did you tweet this? Uh, just a, <laughs> just a couple of. I'm never going to find this. It should be your pinned tweet if you really cared about this information. Uh, you're right. You're right. I'll pin it. I'll pin it. Okay. <laughs> There's no kind of simulated sun fucking. You could come into a glass of sunny delight. If you want. Are you interested in that? Hmm. I'm thinking about it. Because there's a 7-Eleven down the street from us right now. And we could do this. It could be like a Patreon thing. I'll mm. jerk you off into a, a bottle of Sunny Delight. Mm. Let me consider it. Okay. Please let me know by the end of the show. <laughs> Let's consider it. All right, Mike. Uh-huh. Um, before we get to the ads here. Both of them. I want to share something with you that yeah. was really amazing that Kevin Plackey shared yeah. with me. And now I'm going to share it with you. And that's how sharing works. I watched this episode of Fraggle Rock. Dynamic banter. Welcome back. So you know that AI, there's like AI software that's doing all sorts of bonkers shit. Replacing artists. Replacing artists. Like Casey Landerkin. Dude, Owen was like, man, next thing you know, editors are going to be replaced by AI. Yeah. And I was like, I think you need humans for editing. Edit this in the style of Owen Carter. Yeah. You can't like get a robot to have the intricacies of that. Unless you spent a fuck ton of money having the AI study just one editor's work. You would have to program in a sense of humor. And I don't even know where you start with. I wouldn't know how to do a digital clock. Not only that, like experience and vision and like yeah. consciousness. Dude, that's when it's over because that's when girls can just upload a sense of humor into their dildos. Mm -hmm. And then you don't and need guy done. for nothing. We're done. Yeah. Yeah. Then you're out. What's the deal with airplane food? <laughs> <laughs> So an AI, uh, last year. You should have them guess what artist it is. Really? Do you think that's more fun? So you're saying. Would it be more fun for you to guess? Okay, okay, okay. We'll be right back. Casey and Landry. They used these, these scientists, these madmen, these technologists, whatever you want to call them. I'd like to call them technologists. These fucking nerds. Yeah used AI to create a new song from a band that can no longer make new songs. Because of dead. Because of one dead. So it's not the Beatles. I'll just throw that out there right away. Although I'm sure one of those might exist, huh? Nirvana. Have you heard that one? Uh -uh. We should listen to that one next. Wow. Yeah, you guessed it. It's Got Nirvana. It. <laughs> And wait, really? Yeah, I love it. And <laughs> AI software created a new Nirvana song. Does it start like this? Back em, back em, back em, back em. <laughs> Dude, you're not gonna believe this. Uh huh. Man, you know how I should have introduced this more than anything? They found a new Nirvana song. Yeah. Let's go back in time. <laughs> All right, Mike. Forget Let's go it. back in time. Figure out what the beginning of the show was yeah. about. <laughs> forget it. Yeah. Why did I bring up the Gremlins Two boardroom <laughs> sketch? Because I know there's a good reason that probably yeah. would have led to some good shit. Yeah, for sure. Totally gone. <laughs> uh, Let's hit Mike in the head and see if he'll first. <laughs> if I don't, you're just hitting me in the head. <laughs> yeah. Okay. If we don't, it's still good content. I okay. Think. Okay. Okay, so this song is by Nirvana, and it's called Drowned in the Sun. Is it about stuff? Or is it nonsense? Okay. Uh, apparently, apparently, I don't know. <laughs> Let's find out. Dude. The cover band in the middle of the day at your town's fair. Oh, 
Oh yeah. Isn't it crazy? I like it a lot. Yeah, it's good. Halftime chorus. Dude, I'm in. It's crazy. This is how Tupac keeps putting out records. Yeah. Dude, that's crazy, man. It's crazy. They did it with Amy Winehouse, Jimi Hendrix, Jim Morrison. Yeah. The same guy? Same people. Is it the same account? Is this okay to do? (laughs) How many? You know how when you do the AI generator for the pictures and it comes up with nine and three of them are funny as fuck? Yeah. I wonder. I want to see the outtakes. (laughs) Dude. This one's called Farts in the Dungeon. Um, <laughs> Farts in the Dungeon. I cut my hands on my butt. A fart in the dungeon. A fart in your foot. Uh, let's see. How about this? A Eurovision song created by artificial intelligence. I'm less interested in that, but I will listen mm-hmm. to it. Sam. It's important for Eurovision songs that you could ice skate to them. Yes, exactly. <laughs> Eurovision music is really fun. It's, it's a lot. It's a lot. It's like a yeah. Jeffrey Bezos. Jeffrey Bezos. Dude, we could make a we could make a song like this. Dude, if a computer can do it. Oh yeah. Jeffrey Bezos. The toilet is up and down. The toilet goes down. Toilet goes up, the toilet goes down. It's going fast, the toilet turns, I tell you to. The dream of the toilet will live forever. Fun song. The dream of the toilet will live forever. That one's called The Dream of the Toilet Will Live Forever. The Beatles one. Where? The little circle one. This? Yeah. Whoa, Daddy's car, an AI generated Beatles song. What if it's like, let me take you down, cause I'm Daddy's to Daddy's car. <laughs> I think I'm gonna be sad. I think it's the Daddy's car. <laughs> um, all right, please. Uh, here it is. This is an AI generated Beatles song called Daddy's Car. Mm-hmm. Maybe if they did a modern song. Dude, I only have fucked up things to say in my head right now. And I don't know how to say it without being not good. Someone said it's like a mashup between the Beatles, Tame Impala, and Electric Light Orchestra. It is more like a Tame Impala. I don't not like the song. It's just not like a Beatles song. There was an AI song contest. This is like if Paul died instead of John. And John was still making music when he was like in his 70s. Yeah, exactly. Or like a new Oasis song or something. Yeah. <laughs> um, I, it's fun. Yeah. How do we find some of these other ones? I sent you the link that has. Oh, where'd you send it? Oh. Oh, here we go. Okay. Dude, it's just Kurt Cobain's vocals. The Rolling Stone. It has links to all of Would you, you say Jimi Hendrix? Yeah. Jimi Hendrix in my in my I'm guessing would be the easiest one. Should we listen to the Amy Winehouse one first? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, let's do that. Dude, they just came out with this vinyl collection that's like her live at Glastonbury in like 2008 or whatever. I was very curious about that. It was privated. We can't listen to it now. How about the Doors? Let's see if this Doors one is. Were you a Doors fan? Uh I didn't give a fuck about the doors. 
you know, the doors has some good stuff, but <clears throat> yeah, I I don't I'm not I don't need them. Like if you were like, let's get rid of like, you know, three bands. But you you have to get rid of one band out of the three. And if it was like Beatles, Rolling Stones, fuck and, Mary Kill, the Beatles, Rolling Stones, on the Doors, and the Doors, I'd be like, get the Doors out of there. Yeah, get Dude, that drugged out fuck out of here. All it takes to ruin a classic band for you is one roommate that really likes them. <laughs> it's true, <laughs> or a girlfriend that really broke your heart. <laughs> mm-hmm. She loved it. She, she loved Jim Morrison. Loved Jim what Morrison. a red flag that is. Uh, honestly, girls dude, who love Jim Morrison, I'm skeptical. I'm skeptical <laughs> honestly. <laughs> AI. Oh, how about this? AI created. Oops. AI created like sound alike or something, right? AI generated um, Sherry Lewis. Atlanta. Oh, AI generated is better. AI generated. God damn you, fuck. What? My hands are being poo poo. Oh no. My Steve's hands don't hands. listen. Steve's hands have gone. My hands rogue. stopped listening. You promised me you'd never use your hands. Your Honor, my hands just stopped listening. I don't know if you've ever. <laughs> I have scientific proof. I have, I have literal proof of you telling me that you would never use your hands for anything. And you just. I do. Broke yeah, your, your Honor, that's true. Here we go. Here's some more songs generated in the style of the Beatles. AI generated static. AI bootleg. <laughs> wow, it's like someone in the comments of the Nirvana one said it's like listening to a, a band in your dream. <laughs> you yeah. can't quite hear what the song is, but you've never heard it before. Yeah, yeah. It's like a uh, like a mix. Well, that's exactly what it is. Right. Epona set my toilet was the lyric there. Epona set my toilet There's, down. there's more. There's That's so fun. many. That's fine. They're all Beatles. Shoot my mouth. Shoot my mouth. All is dead. And it's all different album types. AI generated Ringo Starr. How about this one? Is this what we're gonna do? We're just gonna listen. I said we'd do it at least before the end. Who's this supposed to be? Beatles. No, this one's bad. This is one of the bad ones. This is Wish Beatles. Wish. Yeah, com it Beatles. is. I ordered the Beatles. We have the Beatles at home. Uh, how about this? I made a bot write a Metallica song. Oh. This is the bot writing it. I'm picturing a battle bot doing it. Here I run a mouth! It's scary to the mouth! Yeah! <laughs> Sounds kind of more like Rob Zombie than Metallica. First day of buying a motorcycle uh-huh. and put the song up. <laughs> this is great. Hell is the one who waits for you. This is the Beatles, you said? <laughs> Dude, Lars Aldrich sues us for playing this. Right? <laughs> Dude, how funny. They found a song we didn't write. <laughs> too many, too many I can't, 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 you. Death, deliverance, bounce, and your hockey stick in the birthday cake. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, why did they do so many there? Death, delivery, flighty, take it left of the right hand street, go to my brother in law's house. 
Guys. <laughs> <laughs> like, You're all the music stops. Many. This is why we don't write songs anymore. Yeah. Death, delivery, fly, popped out to right center. It's two outs. <laughs> Guys, thank you for listening so far. If you've gotten this far, you're good. We're all good. It's all good. Don't you know, worry about it anymore. It's almost over. It's almost over. I want to thank the sponsors. I want to thank HeadGum. Uh, everyone who helps make this show possible. And since we're on the subject, I want to thank Honey. Thank you, Honey. Thank you, Honey. <laughs> Burping into Burping a sleeping bag. <laughs> Zipping up the sleeping bag. <laughs> it's called the waiting freezer, freezer bag. Freezer. Guys, check this out. Are you want to hear something interesting? This episode is brought sponsored by PayPal, honey. Is that right? Yeah. yeah. That's fun. Big fan of PayPal. Have PayPal been for a long time. Control. PayPal, honey. How do you feel about online shopping, huh? How often do you do it? I do it all the time. I can't help it. I'm addicted to it. My mommy made me. My mommy likes things. So I like them too. And thanks to Honey, manually searching for coupon codes on the internet when you buy things is a thing of the past. I used to have to Google coupon codes for blank, insert name of website here, and I would be frustrated to all heck trying to find these dang coupon codes. Do they work? Is it enough of a discount? Are they expired? Will it install a virus on my computer? Is it for something you don't want and didn't even ask for? Did all of a sudden, did now I have to go find locals in my area? <laughs> Who has the time? Who has the time to find locals in their area? I certainly don't, but you know what Honey does? Honey saves you time and money because it's a free shopping tool that scours the internet for promo codes and applies the best one it finds to your cart. And Honey supports over 30,000 stores online. And that ranges from sites that have tech and gaming products to popular fashion brands and even food delivery. Here's how it works. You're shopping on one of your favorite sites. When you check out, that Honey button drops down and all you gotta do is click apply coupons and within seconds, Honey searches for the coupons it can find for that site. And if it finds a working coupon, oh Honey, you're gonna watch them prices drop. I love it, Mike. I use it whenever I can. I certainly try it on every and any website I buy stuff from. And guess what, guys? You can add honey to your iPhone. Oh, is that right? Yes, you just enable it on Safari and you can find savings on the go. So no longer are you locked into your personal computers or your laptops. Now you can do it on your iPhone. How cool is that? So if you don't already have honey, you could be straight up missing out. <laughs> You know, I used to uh, I used to do it on my computer because they had the extension and it automatically filled it in as soon as you got to like the checkout page. That's right. But them having it on the phone, that's a game changer. Dude, and that's all it is. It's free. It installs in a second. Uh, in a, just a few seconds. God, I mean, come on. Dude, who's digging? Who's even got out here? I said, as I said, said, who's keeping, who's taking count here? And when you get it, you're doing yourself a solid and you're supporting the podcast. And we don't recommend things we don't use and you dang know it. So get Honey for free at joinhoney.com slash banter. That's joinhoney.com slash banter. Thank you, Honey. Mike and I love HelloFresh. Mike and I love to have food. Mike and I have always liked food. Some people don't. 
lot of people get caught up in that lie. They'll come on a podcast and they'll say something like, I've always liked food. And then you go back in their search history. Yeah. Turns out they just got into it. You go like, oh yeah, you like food? Why don't you name five bands? <laughs> One of the members is dead and they just did an AI. <laughs> name all the California raisins. <laughs> I think one was named Rudy, maybe. <laughs> Great find. All right, guys, listen. HelloFresh is delicious because with HelloFresh, you get farm fresh, pre portioned ingredients, and seasonal recipes delivered right to your doorstep. You can skip the trip to the grocery store and count on HelloFresh to make home cooking easy, fun, and affordable. And that's why it's America's number one meal kit. Skim the Hey, why don't you bust out the grill on a nice warm evening and make dinner from HelloFresh's cookout collection with recipes like Melty Monterey Jack Burgers. My uncle real fast is helping us out. <laughs> Thanks, my uncle, uncle from Lou. Yonkers. <laughs> Thank oh, you, my boy. uncle from Port Chester Lewis here that kind of helped us out with the ads this week. This week. Listen, you guys need to watch. Go to 4th Street and meet me there at 3 p.m. Thanks, Uncle Lou. But right now I'm talking about HelloFresh. Absolutely. It's foolproof, boys. The step-by-step recipes mean a joyful cooking experience in a stress-free summer. Plus, HelloFresh cuts back on time spent in the kitchen oh, with meals ready in around 30 minutes or less. Not all. <laughs> Thanks a lot, Lou. Thank you, Lou. <laughs> I understand you gotta go. <laughs> get, get the fuck out of here! HelloFresh is 72% cheaper than dining at a restaurant, all right? And is even cheaper than grocery shopping. So why don't you put that in your milk? <laughs> okay. Guys, go to HelloFresh.com slash banter16. Use that code banter16. You're going to get up to 16 free meals and three free games. That's HelloFresh.com slash banter16. Use that code banter16 for up to 16 free meals and three free gifts. Why are you calling me? I got to get out of here. He came back? He called, I called him. Oh. All right, Lou. Thanks a lot. Hey, shut the f- phone. Shut the phone up. Thank you so much to HelloFresh. We have more. Uh, we have some new, more new. We have more. That's like, the best. Whenever it's good and you've got new and more, <laughs> that's what you want. <laughs> Dude, that's me trying to like. If we stop this tomorrow and yeah. we had to get another job. <laughs> Dude, that's like when you're on a panel and you don't know what to say next, and you're it's, the you're Q and A. What's you got to do the newest? More. <laughs> People are and, gonna love uh, it. Of course, everyone here is here to see you guys. Every last one of us. Go down this panel. More, new, more, new. And I think you'll find <laughs> the fabric that joins us all is that we're all doing the most new more than anybody else. Thank you so much for coming. We've only been here for five minutes. We haven't really learned anything. The guy that didn't do his research before the Q&A <laughs> panel. And everyone's here to see you, all of you guys. And so third down, you said that you liked. <laughs> You've done more recently. Talk about that. Third down. You don't even say their name. <laughs> <laughs> you used to read whatever's, yeah. whatever April. you think is on Cassie? their 
Well, Cassie's out, but I've got her placard here. That's right. Yes, you sure do. And that's a good example of doing more for a newer thing more. I liked what Cassie did in season three. Any questions from the audience? <laughs> Last minute replacement for the moderator. Oh. for the. All right. So you've been doing more. Talk about it. It's kind of a new thing for you. What are you up to these days? <laughs> Dude, the bullshit voice. Does the song count as the history road? It's the AI generated Beatles history road song. Steve, go like this. Yes. Thanks, buddy. Would I have a little cum? Yes. You didn't clean up after you fucked the sun. Damn. <laughs> Dude, I did I one of those forget to do that. AI generators. My my favorite one was um, Abraham Lincoln kissing God. <laughs> <laughs> Didn't turn out. Really. I like the one that was like babies in the Supreme Court or something. <laughs> There's like a bunch of stupid great ones. I love them. Um, that long in history road came from someone. Ellie <laughs> sends an email. Oh, okay, okay. <laughs> People have been sending me this, and probably you too. And I think they, that people really want us to comment on this. And I don't know what it is, but it has something to do with Elvis. If it has anything to do with the chili dog, I'm out. It's no chili dog. I get sent chili dog stuff more than any other so thing. Much. I'm out. Yeah. Just know that. I know. New, new, do more new. We're done that with is the chili old. dogs. <laughs> We've moved on from the chili dogs. <laughs> <laughs> the chili dog incident is no longer. We're looking for more new. We're not acknowledging chili dogs. Best. Unless you want to send them to us. Uh, Kevin, do you know what this is? This Elvis thing? Okay. So Ellie says, uh, I don't know if y'all have seen this, but please go to 151 of this. Peace and love. Where's my Where's my Ringo? Ellie Viss. <sighs> Peace and love. Peace and love. He's in a little office building. <laughs> That's what that reverb sounded 151. like. 151. Okay, so let's go to 151. This is Elvis. Oh, I, I know what this is. You do? Yeah. It's live Elvis. It's Elvis. If it's what I'm thinking of, it's worth it. Okay. All right, let's go to 140. A mean, vicious, straight razor total woman. Lord have mercy. <laughs> <laughs> oh my so that little noise at the end is elvis fully inserting the microphone into his mouth into his like throat <laughs> oh, <laughs> <loves it>. that. <laughs> what a cool noise is i like that, that he right? goes oh i'm gonna fucking break my try teeth. it oh <laughs> lord have mercy <laughs> that's what my throat sounds like lord have mercy oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's fucking good, man. Wow. Dude, that's like, you know how um, like teenagers have this, teenagers and people in their early 20s have this like, I'm going to live forever yeah. type vibe. Yeah. Putting a microphone into your mouth is one of those I'm going to live forever type. Dude, especially in the 70s <laughs> when that wasn't 
That you could get electrocuted to death doing that. For sure. <laughs> like like holding it. <laughs> yeah, you could get electrocuted to death Dude, holding it. I remember it. my uncle, who was a musician, always had like microphones set up in the basement and stuff, and nothing was grounded properly. So whenever we tried to use them, we'd get the fucking fuck shot oh, shocked yeah. out of us. Dude, we learned a lot about touching things and not touching things. We got electrocuted more than any other generation after us. <laughs> it's true. Like kids today don't get fucking yacked into place oh absolutely you're you know right, what i mean man. how do kids today get really really hurt <laughs> playing with a swallowing a fidget spinner <laughs> how about this <laughs> <laughs> All right. that's never ever not gonna be funny <laughs> thank you ellie for that wonderful history road thank ellie, you, ellie. is that ellie's first history road probably not she would have said something perfect find ellie <laughs> oh <laughs> Steve went down a Mario pipe room. <laughs> Ow. Whoa. Um, where's Kevin? Oh, the Kevin. Remember the Kevin sound? I just found it again. Hang on. Hang on. <laughs> when we asked Kevin what he wanted at the diner. Where is he? What's this one? <laughs> Why is it so loud? Why is the screeching pig so loud? <laughs> is my only question. There's a pistery road uh, that is being submitted here by Abby. Someone named Abby. Okay. <laughs> What's that? We just got to Lou. <laughs> <laughs> I gotta well, shake one out, up. kids. I gotta shake the doo off the lily. <laughs> That's the dude, like, when he has a wedgie, he's like, I got a little goat in my garden. Yeah. <laughs> gotta go check the mailbox. I gotta go change my oil, if you know, when I get my drink. I'm gonna go jack my dick off. Yeah, destruction. I'm gonna jack my dick off. I'm gonna go to my garden, yeah. Everything else is an innuendo, except I'm gonna go jack my dick off. <laughs> Um, I'll right. be back in two shakes of a lamb tail. I gotta go jack my dick off and come out. <laughs> if you know what I mean, I gotta go shake the dew off the lily and then jack my dick off to orgasm. <laughs> I gotta go. I got a little bee in my tree. Then I'm gonna go jerk my <laughs> dick off <laughs> for full release masturbation. If you catch my dick. I'm masturbation if you catch my dick. If you know what I mean. If you're hanging on to what I'm throwing at you. <laughs> Let's see if I can raise that up the flagpole and see if it flies when it jerked the cup out of my dick. <laughs> or was it at the pot calling the kettle black while he jerked my dick off and come? <laughs> and if you're falling asleep to this, I just like it, want to say good night. Hey. Good night. Um, <laughs> Abby says, hello, boys. I'm a I'm a one bad honk dot MP4 winter girl <laughs> from New Jersey. Humble brag. So far, so far, I'm, I'm in. When I was 11, I went with my dad to pick up my sister from soccer practice at one of those big outdoor sports fields. I heard of them. Something tells me this isn't coming from a, a star athlete. <laughs> <laughs> we found out we were a half hour early and had to wait for her practice to end. Well, uh, I was a kid and made mistake the mistake of not peeing before we left. Rookie and now, move, rookie little kid move. I really had to go. It's such a kid move. You learn in your adult years to figure that out a little bit. That's why your your parents are always asking you, "Do you have to make sissy?" Right. You have to go pips. And it's like, do you need to pee before we go on the road? Because we're going on a long trip. And when you're a kid, you're like, no, I just want to go. Yeah. But it's like, dude, when you're an adult, you're like, I need to piss. Yeah. Before I go or there's going to be a problem. My parents used to call the highway the big road. So we're going on the big road. You got to go to the bathroom? <laughs> the big road. That's good. I like that. Because it's like a the longer trip. Road. Yeah. Yeah. The long and big road. <laughs> <laughs> My dad watched my sisters practice as I painfully shuffled around trying to find a place to pee 
and failing because there were people goddamn everywhere and nowhere I could pop a squat without being seen. This pee is actually going nowhere. I went back to the car in the parking and tried to curl up in a ball to hold it in. But after a few minutes, I knew I was screwed. After a few minutes, I found a giant toilet. <laughs> And put a microphone in. And I was screwed. I got out of the car and desperately looked for something in the trunk I could pee into. Alas, there were no bottles. Can you face me? <laughs> and no closed containers of any kind. The only thing I could find were some of those mini traffic cones used for kids sports that are basically just orange funnels. So there I am, peeing in the back seat of my dad's car. Into a practice cone. <laughs> that was like half of a goal a second ago. I got my hand sealing the small end of the cone. Oh, no. Yeah. Dude, this is crazy. You went so far. Yeah. <laughs> like, go find a bush. And in the end, it didn't even matter. And in the end, it didn't even matter. <laughs> Alas. Uh... Dude, if you wow. if you have a funnel, you could essentially just use it as like a stand up dick. Yeah, because weren't they selling those those per, those paper funnels? Yeah, for girls to like use urinals yeah. and shit. Yeah, or vagina havers to use urinals. <laughs> <laughs> nice, good job, good save, bro. The audience really like that. Such a progressive thing for me. To say. Very good. <laughs> Jack me off. <laughs> Jack up my dad. Um, Man, the audience is really... <laughs> they love it when you get woke. <laughs> That's the secret. <laughs> <laughs> the secret to the internet is getting woke. Um, I hike up my pants. Oh, oh uh, sorry. Uh, they're holding the small end of the cone, holding it upside down. And got the hand sealing the small end of the cone. So now it's a bowl for my piss. And I pee into it when no parents or kids are walking by the car. I get dangerously close to filling up the whole cone. Mm. Let's cut to a clip. We keep cutting back. <laughs> Let's cut to a clip. No, <laughs> no, 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 no. Um... <laughs> But luckily, I do not fill it all the way up. I hike up my pants while I got one hand sealing my piss cone. Whoa. Trying not to spill any. This the gymnastics. Is such an insane length to yeah. go to. You didn't piss your pants, by the way, like, if that's where this is going. Go pee in the street, dude. Like, yeah. squat in the fucking street. Dude, when you're a kid, though, you're, you're, Scared. you go from nothing, no shame at all. And then as soon as you learn what shame is, it's all shame everything. forever. Yeah. yeah. You're embarrassed to be around your funny dad. You're embarrassed mm -hmm. if your shoe makes a fart sound. Yeah. <laughs> Do you remember being petrified that you were in a quiet room and your shoe made like a fart sound? This must have been before you found your sense of humor and stuff. I guess it would have been like chairs. Yeah. Like if a chair made a yeah. fart sound and I didn't yeah. do that, I'd be like, no, the girls are ever going to like yeah. it. Fat Steve shit his pants again. He must have shit. No, it was the chair, you fuck. Oh, that kid shit his pants. Dude, definitely Dude. that fat kid shit his pants before even the realm of possibility of like a chair made noise. A billion percent. A billion percent. <laughs> the fat kid shit his pants. The fat kid sat in his shit all again, day. Again. again. And you're just like sweating and you're like, I've like, literally no never shit. shit my pants. I never. I've never shit my pants. I haven't shit my pants in front of you, in front of anyone. One, and you're like this is the fifth time <laughs> man bullies are mean I pop open the car door and oh, I pop open the car door open no no you don't no you certainly didn't you did you popped open the car door you opened an open door and move my hand from the bottom of the cone and deposit my piss onto the asphalt Boiling the piss. Now I have a piss cone and a piss hand, and it's better, but it's better than pissing my pants, I think. I ditch the cone in the garbage and use hand sanitizer and manage to get away with the whole shebang without flashing anyone. To this day, my dad doesn't know I took the weirdest piss of my life in the backseat of his car 
for now you all know. Peace and love. Peace and love, Abby. Phone number redacted. <laughs> Dude, that's such a funny... It's so funny to remember the weirdest piss you took. I know, right? Like, that's Do like the first remember? time you had sex or what? I was literally just thinking about it. There were times that I've had to pee out of a moving car, like out of the window of a moving oh, car. Oh, sure. And that's never good. Yeah. Peeing into like, there were a lot of um, high school sports trips that would end in trying to shield your dick from your friends while you pissed in a yeah. Gatorade bottle. Yeah, don't look at my dick, dude. Why are you looking at my dick? And then dick? you make the coach's wife drink it. Yeah. Well, that's because the coach was bet, a piece his of shit. <laughs> he bet his wife. That's only because the coach's wife loved it. Yeah. Oh, she did. <laughs> she told us. No. no, it was probably like a like a back seat. Anytime you had to sit down and piss into something was in the back seat of a yeah. car or something is weird. Well, I was trying to think of what mine was. There was a time when I peed between a girl's legs while they were on the toilet. Because she was like, just go. They were like, let's see if we can make this work. Huh. That girl had motives. Oh, that girl yeah. had interests and motives that were unspoken oh, at yeah. the time. For sure. Someone just wanted to see the pee-pee, I think. Someone had to have pee in their lap to get off. Um, Hannah sends a short boy guaranteed chuckle. I don't like that. We'll don't see. you dare guarantee a chuckle. But now you're you're already setting the bar yeah. instead of just like here's this fun story. So now part of me is like, oh yeah, what do you got? Yeah. This is like a tactic to get on the show hmm. to say guaranteed chuckle in the subject line. I think. It but worked. It, we'll see. We'll see. Well, it's just the next one I picked. It didn't have nothing to do with the subject line, as a matter of fact. Okay. It had a lot to do with how short it was, that's for sure. <laughs> Just put short in the subject line, you'll get on the show. Totally. Honestly, yeah. <laughs> this is a short one. I think people did that for a while. You don't have to do the guaranteed People still do thing. that. It even says short boy, guaranteed chuckle. It's both. They tried every keyword to get this on the show. Guaranteed short honk boy chuckle. You know what? Summer I'm not going to read this. <laughs> <laughs> Just call the number and be like, what'd you write us on? Why'd you write this? <laughs> Hannah says, hello, Mickey and Stewie. I thought this Reddit post Strike one. <laughs> would be of interest to you. Guaranteed chuckle. Although you have not spoken of Goblin Core extensively, it has been on my mind for weeks and apparently in my feed. What's that? Did we talk about Goblin Core? Goblin Core is this, like, style of clothing in a goblin way. Like, it's kind of torn up. And you've got, like, a satchel with, like, trinkets in it. Like homeless people. Yes. yes. Homeless people are goblin for it? Yes. Okay. Uh, I can't find the original post, but I managed to grab this screenshot. Thank you for making my favorite mental stability podcast and for tickling my funny bone for so long. You two are definitely a huge reason why I'm getting through, why I am getting through lately, and I appreciate you much. Reese's Pieces and love. So she sent what? Sent a screen grab. Of something from Reddit, maybe? And it says, how do I get my husband to stop going goblin mode during sex? <laughs> oh, no. Oh, no. Too long, didn't read. My husband says, goblin mode activated when we start to have sex. <laughs> growls and acts like a caveman and then says goblin mode off when we stop. And then pre pretends to not remember afterward. I don't like it. I don't like that. Dude, if you're a female that would be into goblins, getting fucked by a goblin, let us know. And I feel like we're maybe never going to hear from anyone about that. It doesn't sound like, I mean, whatever, I'm not here to yuck yums, but it doesn't sound like a desirable... A desirable feature? To get fucked by an absent-minded goblin? Yeah, and then have them be like, I don't remember that. That's like a big, big red flag. Sure. That's the biggest red flag there is. I how think. do you, That should be, how do I break up with this guy? This <laughs> Not like, how do I make my boy? Yeah. What if he's like perfect? How do I break up with this guy who's perfect, but he's a goblin? He's perfect. He's a 10, but he's a goblin. <laughs> <laughs> when he's a 10, but he's a goblin. That's really funny. Dude. <sighs> He's a 10, but he doesn't remember he's a goblin. What? If, so if he just says goblin mode on, he suddenly forgets everything he does. So he's like he goblin says, mode on. <laughs> goblin mode off. 
<laughs> Yuck. <laughs> Don't like that at all. Sorry, dude. What happens if he turns on goblin mode when he's at the theater? Or at the bank. Or the bank. But we're not fucking him. See, that's what, you know, takes all kinds, I suppose. Different strokes. Different strokes for my dick out. <laughs> Come. Um, we got another piss. Uncle Lou's always going goblin mode. Uncle Lou goes goblin mode all the time. I've been going goblin mode since you were in scary. Jose. Dude, your uncles always remember when you were in your they own. They always <laughs> remember. When you run around pissing your skimmies. I remember that little dick. <laughs> no. I remember that little dick. I remember that little dick. Come here while I'm pissing. You can talk to me still. No, 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 no. No, 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 no. <laughs> the bad family dynamic. Bringing back the piss. Jose that says hello. never takes pictures together. <laughs> Jose says, hello, Michelangelo and Esteban. My name is Poncho. I don't know about all these horns and honks, but I was born a brown boy. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, already top 10. <laughs> I wear brown clothes, drive a brown car, and I deliver brown boxes. If you can't guess what I do for a living, you can stick that in your pipe and smoke it. <laughs> I'd like to bring back the piss if you don't mind. This is all piss It's related. all piss stuff. All piss related piss shit. Tree, piss tree road. Piss tree goblin. I'm a semi-long listener. I actually got introduced to this amazing pod show by a Target cashier girl. Shout out to Target Peoria Far North. <laughs> hey, shout out. Hey, shout out one time, Target Peoria. Dude, remember when we did that targeted ad for Peoria? Yeah. <laughs> it really worked out. Hey, for residents us. of Peoria North. Dude, me and Steve spent $5,000 on a billboard in Peoria. <laughs> Do you live in Far North Peoria? Well, check out our billboard. <laughs> There's no information on it. Nope, just check it out. <laughs> I love, love, love the soundboard sounds. It always cracks me up when I hear one, but when I started listening to the pod show, I started from episode one, two, three, and et cetera. So I don't know beginning. what that conversation was between... I know the target. Let us know. Follow up with what that message was. Did he leave a number? No. Damn. When you want him to, they never do. I skipped ahead and started listening to current ones. Skipped ahead? Yeah? You can skip the last two years, in my opinion. Kevin said he's out. You can skip all the Zoom episodes. I'm in not my just personal gonna... <laughs> I'm sorry. I mean, sure, you could. You could if you wanted to. Do you want it to go right back to the way it was instantly? Skip ahead two years. Yeah, definitely between the pandemic was a rough one. <laughs> Do you um, want to hear us be a little bummed out for two years? Not only am I going to stop reading this email, I'm going to delete it so I never <laughs> find it again. <laughs> Uh, I started listening to the current ones at the time of recommendation. Oh, does that mean they recommended to start now, maybe, at the Target? I don't know. We'll find out. I find it fun figuring out how you guys come up with the sounds. So far, I've only been able to witness one sound from its inception, and that was Billy Joel's mm -hmm. Stop It! Mm -hmm. Quit lighting the audience! Dude, did you put the... What was the new... The guy trying to hit the note, but not... <laughs> It's more th <laughs> Dude, <laughs> the the sound itself is beautiful. Yeah. But I think even above that for me is the timing of the sound. Oh, insane. That is like there's no one on this earth <laughs> funny enough to time yeah. that like that on purpose. Oh, a billion percent. That's a mistake. Yeah. He was gearing up for it. He knows he has to do it, but he knows it's not there. And he knows it has to come before the next lyric. He doesn't like it, does he? He just has to put it there. <laughs> <laughs> it just goes there because it has to. And then you're hoping that people forget about it and not put it in a sound box. He seems to be having a good time. Oh, yeah. Dude. <laughs> Two, three, four, five, six. <laughs> <laughs> he could just not do it. Yeah, it was the fucking yeah, everybody knows. Yeah, sure, you could have skipped it. Because the audience might be doing it. In that case, the audience might be doing it, I think. Uh, um, okay. 
I took a break, don't judge, and now I've learned there are new sounds I haven't been able to find out where they came from. Wow, this is so funny. Someone like wanting to find the origins of where all these sounds came from, that's, that's great. pretty good. I'll also say that it means a lot for you if you took a break no matter the reason or no matter the era of dynamic banter if you took a break and came back and you're listening to this right now we appreciate you Absolutely. very very much because that's not an e easy decision to make normally like there's so much stuff everyone makes stuff and to be out on a thing and then to come back to the thing it's we are forever appreciative it's, of that yeah it's good that's that's what you want like it's okay to go take a break mm-hmm uh, but if you don't never come back because most sucks. people don't come back. Right. Um, <laughs> Please so, never take. Me. <laughs> so far, I don't know where the sound bites <laughs> erotic jackpot. Does he? And you gotta fill it at the entire thing with your cum come from. Well, aren't those Wait, from different the, shows? Yeah. What's the does he? Does he? I don't know. Yeah, those are from first time show. Mm -hmm. Well. Um, yeah, yeah, because the Balky stuff from, uh, from Perfect Strangers was because the guy that wasn't Balky was on... Larry Appleton. Yeah, Larry Appleton, Cousin Larry, was on The Leftovers. Like, that mm -hmm. actor was. Uh -huh. And so we brought in a bunch of, like, <laughs> Perfect Strangers clips. Uh -huh. And now they just live here. They're just littering that our show's show dead now. other shows trash. Um, and that's, so that's, yeah, that's all from Leftovers. My favorites so far are Does He and Erotic. What the fuck is Does He? You must be thinking, Does He? Is there something that sounds like they're saying Does He? Don't be ridiculous. Don't be? Does He. Oh, is it Dazim? Does He. Does He. <laughs> oh my god. You think it says, does he? Does he? Does he? Does he? <laughs> does he? <laughs> That's funny. Do you not? You don't? Yeah, because he said he doesn't know where it comes from. It's this. Please welcome the wickedly talented one and only Adele Dazeem. It's Adele Dazeem. Dude, what? The more I listen to that, I've heard so many, uh, at stand-up shows, I've heard so many people fuck up people's names because it's a live environment and you only get it's like the walking on sunshine guy you get a finite amount of time and you need to make a decision and you need to commit to it <laughs> yeah. so the tone and tenor that john travolta says adele dazim knowing that that is not her name In at all way. is really impressive yeah it's it's the it's tone is very very confident and impressive. The most wrong confidence. That's the most wrong you could be while sounding the most confident. The most confident. <laughs> no no no, that's not. There's an element missing there because people say things that they know are wrong confidently all the time because they know they need to sell it. He's not doing that. He doesn't know. He's not sure. So right. he's not confident, but he knows he needs to keep it together. <laughs> right. Right. Because he's with, he's like, he's amongst his peers. You dude. know what that is? That's somebody with their voice landing a plane that's on fire. Yeah. 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 Exactly. He has no control. He knows We're that he's never fine. done this before, yeah. but he knows for the sake of the, he has to, he has to be okay. <laughs> Right, because if he freaks out, everyone's going to freak the and fuck And if he out. goes, well, I don't know, then... It's over. Yes, then the flight attendants start to sweat. Please welcome the wickedly talented one and only Adele Dazim. Beautiful. Landed plane, everyone cheers. Anyways, I think it's funny figuring out how you guys come up with the soundboard sounds. P.S. Fuck Amazon and FedEx ground drivers who drive and park like idiots while I work. FedEx, FedEx Express, I'm glad we're on the same page. And to the rest of y'all, quit playing with the purple clowns and go big brown. <laughs> what does any of it I mean? Think the, is the purple clowns FedEx? Yeah. And big brown is Oh, because he works for UPS. Right. Wow, this guy took his opportunity to shout out the whole neighborhood. Dude, I, first of all, that guy's loyalty to his job should be rewarded. Absolutely. Second of all, it's funny to assume that the FedEx people and the UPS people have ongoing rivalries where they don't like each other. Mm -hmm. I like that a lot. Mm -hmm. Um, Mike Exposed. Mm. Interesting. 
Okay. Tanner sends an email saying, Mike exposed. Howdy, honky boys. You can't call us that. <laughs> I wanted to share two instances within the last week where dynamic banter has poured over from the digital void and into my life. The first being a blank is my favorite blank joke. And the second being a welcome to our podcast clip of Mike unknowingly falling victim to one of DB's long-standing bits. Do you know what this is? No, but I know that I'm not in the DB mindset while I'm sure. Reading. So yeah. if somebody asks a question or something, you're not thinking about it. No. Yeah. Because there's complete separation. I'm the same way on the other yeah, shows. Yeah, it's yeah. like DB can't. It's right. like its own thing. Right. Uh, I was catching up with my roommate after a day at work and he shared this with me. My brother went and saw a Boogie T show last night in which I replied, Boogie T is my favorite 19th century abolitionist. Pretty good. To which he quickly replied, Boogie T is my favorite member of the A-Team. Yes. Both work. Very good. Thank you for the laughs and I wish you peace and love. Okay, so here's the clip of Mike Exposed. Okay. This might be a first. Have we ever played a clip from Welcome to our podcast here? Don't remember. I don't either. I, I don't remember what we talked about last week. I don't know who I am anymore, Mike. Here's me from the past. All right. It's going to take, uh, let's see, three seconds. What's it? Playing in your real player? It's downloading. It had to download. What is this, a nine-minute clip? This is a new win. In Salem, game? Oregon. I'm going to be there July 16th or 17th. Definitely one of those. And I'll check real quick. And it's the 16th. I knew it. I was and right. I was right. <laughs> I, I said that on purpose. That's, that's it had very, to be on That's purpose. not falling victim. No, no. That's, that's me yeah. being a good comedian. Right. Exactly. exactly. <laughs> so, so what you've discovered was <laughs> that I'm funny. <laughs> and your honor. Play it again. Yeah. <laughs> I was right. Dude, I love Mike exposed for falling victim. Yikes, man. We got to figure out. Or you're so good at your job that you <laughs> fool people into thinking you're bad at your job. <laughs> and that's what you want. I bet the UPS guy just drops packages all over right? town. Right? Absolutely. Um, all right. Well, guys, what a show, huh? Yeah, this was fun. We went all over the place. We yeah. went to the Gremlins 2 boardroom. Yeah. All the way to Peoria, far north Peoria. We went from not knowing what we're talking about to kind of knowing what we're talking about. <laughs> Can I do a couple shows Please. real fast? Um, the 9th of this month, I'm at the Nightcap in Burbank. The 16th of this month, we have that one Salem, Oregon show that it orgum that is sold out and then they added a second show and i was right please come to that driving 13 hours to come see you guys on the 22nd i'm going to be at shoebox comedy which is in los angeles bunch of stuff in los angeles sprinkled in i usually put that in the story section of my instagram follow me there at mike falzone on the 27th that's the jfl in montreal surrounded show it's going to be fucking awesome they've been asking a lot of really uh fucking cool uh i don't want to say too much but they've been asking a lot of cool comedians to be a part of it that's awesome. so uh hopefully it will and that's it for plugs and i also want to say that uh you know thank you for continuing to show support to the patreon we have a little meeting after this to keep figuring out um just planning stuff a really fun really fun different weird stuff that we want to film for you guys we've been having a really good time over there Kevin's doing a great job. Ryan's doing a great job. Uh, Leah's doing a great job. Leah? Leah. <laughs> and um, that's going to be... Uh, I just love working with this group of people and everybody's doing a great job. Steve's doing a great job. Thanks, man. We're all do Everyone's doing great. And I was just thinking in the shower about some of the stupid shit we were planning after I jacked off. Uh, but uh, we have so much stupid stuff planned. I hope even half of it gets made. It's Dude, we have cool. stuff filmed. Yeah, there's stuff in the can. Man. That I can't wait to see. Yeah, serious. Yeah. We've been doing some real fun stuff. So thank you guys for the support there. Thank you to HeadGum, our sponsors, and all the listeners. And I'll tell you about next time on the show. That was a HeadGum podcast. <laughs>